In this video, I'm going to be painting up a battery of artillery. This is going to be an attachment to the 2nd Corps 6th Division, and it kind of goes hand in hand with the brigade I had painted in my previous video. This battery is under command of Captain Monnier, and it consists of three stands. The first thing you want to do is prime everything white, and in order to do that quickly, I mount everything onto a paint stick or a shim stick as I'm showing here. I put all the bases on like this, and then I apply either an aerosol primer or in this case a white airbrush primer and I make sure to have coverage all the way around, especially underneath the gun. That is an easy area to miss, so watch out for that. To get easy access to these models, go ahead and remove them from the paint stick once the priming is dry. Now let's look at all the key colors for this artillery. First of all, the gun carriage tends to be this light green and the guns are bronze. And for the uniform colors of this specific foot artillery, I go to this website that I'm flashing on top of the screen. And as you can see here, their main features are fully blue tunics, sometimes blue pants. They also have red epaulettes, pompons, and cuffs. Their collars are mainly blue with red piping and all the straps are white. Starting with the gun carriages, I use malignant green. This is actually a very light green with hints of yellow. So this works pretty well on the gun carriages. It honestly makes it a little bit brighter. So if you want later on, you can wash it. But I wanted to leave it bright because these models are fairly small and hard to notice on the tabletop. Sometimes brighter colors draws your eye to it a little bit more. Next, I use Talos Bronze Speed Paint on the guns themselves. Now just make sure to apply it all the way on the gun, including at the bottom, towards the back. Just slow down a little bit and be careful when you approach the carriage. You don't want to smear this darker paint onto that lighter green. Next, for the faces and the hands of the crew, I use Peachy Flesh Speed Paint and I apply it very generously, allowing it to pool a little bit onto the faces and onto the hands. This color is slightly light, so you want to make sure you have enough saturation on the models. Now moving on to the great coats and the shako covers, I'm going to be using these three colors, Palette Bone, Grey Floor Grey, and Tyrian Navy. Over here, you can see that these models here, here, and here have shako covers, while only one model here has an exposed shako. Also notice that this model here and this model here have great coats, while the other two have exposed uniforms here and here. So you want to paint each one differently. I start with palette bone speed paint and I randomly pick some shako covers from model to model stand to stand and I just paint some of the shako covers in this color and then I switch to great coats again I randomize it some will have this palette bone speed paint others are going to have the other colors I then switch to gray floor gray speed paint and I paint a few of the great coats this color. I do leave a few of them white because I'm going to put Tyrion Navy on them later. And then shackle covers, I apply the gray floor gray onto all the remaining shackle covers. I finally switch to Tyrion Navy, which is a dark gray with a hint of blue. And I apply it only onto the remaining great coats. All the shackle covers should already have either gray or brown on them. Next, I switched to Hylord Blue Speed Paint for all the tunics and some of the pants. I had mentioned in my previous video that the reason why I picked a slightly brighter blue color is because I want these models to stand out a little bit more. They are tiny models with very small features, so a brighter blue does catch the eye better. You should note that all the exposed tunics do get blue, but you can leave some of the pants white and just paint a few of them blue. You want that little bit of variation to make things interesting. The next color is hardened leather speed paint and this goes on the ramrod in this area here to give it a wooden like look. I also put it onto the budufu which is this little match that you see here that this one crewman is handling. Next, I switched to Grim Black Speed Paint and I'm going to be putting this onto the exposed shako on the one crewman. Also, all the rims of the caps are going to get this Grim Black Speed Paint. Basically, the rims are always black even if they have a shako cover on. 
Next, I move on to the shoes. I apply this grim black and just be careful to apply them all the way around and not to smear them under the pants above. If you do, it's very easy. Just get some white paint and clean up afterwards. I also paint the base of the ramrod black. Now I'm going to go back to gray floor gray and apply this gray onto the sponge of the ramrod right here. This sponge goes all the way around so make sure you have coverage from all angles. Next I'm going to use leftover colors like hardened leather, palette bone and grim black and just randomly paint the hair on the backs of the heads of all the crewmen. There is nothing specific here, just randomize and have fun. Next, I move to matte white acrylic paint and I apply this onto all the cross straps. There are cross straps on the front and on the back of all four crew members. So be sure to apply them carefully with a detailing brush. If you overshoot a little bit or make slight mistakes, don't worry about it. There will be a wash step later which will cover a lot of that up. Next, I move to gun metal acrylic metallic paint. And I apply the silver onto the rims of the wheels on the gun carriages. On the gun carriages themselves, there are several areas that have this metallic silver look. So apply them as I'm showing here. I will roll this video montage so you can see all the areas that I applied the silver to. I also put this gunmetal silver color onto all the scabbards that are on the left hand side of each of the crewmen. There is one scabbard for their sword and another scabbard for their bayonet. So go ahead and paint them on all four crewmen on all the bases. Next I use matte black acrylic paint and this is going to go onto all the cartridge boxes on the right hand rear hip of the crew members. There's one on each one. And then afterwards, I'm going to be using this black to create an illusionary hole in the front of the gun like this. I now move to Greedy Gold Acrylic Paint and I'm going to be applying this onto the plate on the exposed shako. There's a plate in the very front of it. Apply gold here and then work your way around the crewmen wherever you see hilts of swords or bayonets. Paint those gold as well. Next, I'm going to switch to pure red acrylic paint. Just to revisit, this is going to go on the pompons, the epaulettes, onto the cuffs of the uniforms, and also the piping around the collars. Just be mindful that these colors are specific to this particular unit that fought in Waterloo. The other units have variations of their own, so if you're painting to be historically accurate, you'll want to be mindful of these kind of things. Here, I'm applying the red onto all the pom-poms and you'll want to do it from the front and the back. Make sure you have full coverage. And then after that, you'll want to move on to any of the cuffs on the sleeves. And you only need to do this with the crewmen that have uncovered uniforms. Anyone with great coats, you do not have to do this on your sleeves because, well, it's covered by the great coats. And also on the same crewmen with blue tunics, you want to apply this red onto their epaulettes on the left hand and on the right hand side of their shoulders. For this particular artillery company or battery, they had red piping on their collars. The collars themselves were blue. So apply a light red streak right down the middle to give it that slight accent, but be careful not to smear. Next, I'm going to use dark tone wash and apply it onto all the white cross straps. This does two things. It really kind of makes the straps pop because now you have definition between the highlights and the shade. And then also it covers up any of your previous mistakes that you may have made on these straps. Also apply this dark wash onto any of the scabbards and swords on the sides of the hips. And also onto any of the white pants to give it the wrinkles and the folds to make it look realistic. Next, I go back to Greedy Gold and I apply this onto all the chin straps on the left hand and on the right hand side of all the shakos. Now, some of them are going to have the chin straps covered, like the one guy that is covering his ears. You do not have to paint those, but wherever you see exposed chin scales, paint them gold. 
It's time to base our models. I use a simple flocking. In this case, I use Battlefield Grass from Army Painter. And then using an old brush and some Elmer's glue, I apply the Elmer's glue on to the top surface of the base like this. Be sure not to get any glue on the models. After that, you can drop the entire base into the tub and then use your fingers to pinch and sprinkle the flocking right on top of the model. After that, just kind of knock the excess off and you should be all set. Finally, put one or two coats of matte clear varnish on your models to protect them. And here is a 360 degree view of one of the completed models. And with this short process, you should have an entire battery of three stands ready to go for your next tabletop battle. Thank you for watching and I have a lot more epic battles videos coming up so make sure to follow along. Until then, happy gaming and hobbying.